stupid. Okay, there it is. How do we get that to happen again? I think it's the wind. Yeah, it's the wind. That's why we agitated. Do you see the structure there? The, I see it! Whoa. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. Okay, we found a way to... Uh, Nirmal? <laughs> Call him. He's not here. Oh, yeah, he went away. Damn it! That's okay. Okay, wind agitates the drops and that's how we'll, we'll probe different parts of it. You see that? Wow. My field's better than yours. My field's better than yours. <laughs> and you can really explain resolving power very well with this experiment. Why do you use uh, why do they use electromicroscopes at all? Oh wow! This is good stuff. More, more, more. It's amazing how much wind affects like a single drop of water, right? Okay, so it's time to explain this to the people who will eventually be viewing this video. Let's find the torch. And let's turn these off. Much better. I'll, I'll do this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, what we have here is a f 5 milliwatt, I think, green laser. Wavelength of like 537 nanometers and a drop of scuzzy water hanging by a bent paper clip. And the water acts as a lens and projects this onto the wall. It's very hard to probe different parts of the drop by moving the laser because any tiny movement there will cause a large shift in the point of focus. And we are not really able to control the curvature of the drop that accurately. But we can agitate the drop just by shaking our hand near it and causing the wind to change things in it. What we are seeing here, we suspect are microbes. We don't see any activity, we just see blind drift movement. And if you look close enough, you will notice that each of these structures has rings associated with them. Oh, that was a long train. Each of the structures has rings around them, right? And that is the diffraction pattern, right? <laughs> this laser's cent central wavelength is roughly 500 nanometers, just 0.5 microns. So each of these rings, at least the largest ring, has the width of 0.5 microns. So that will set the scale of these things to about tens of microns which should be the size of the largest prokaryotic cells I think so we think these are microorganisms and since we have clearly hit the resolving limit of this wavelength of light we cannot see internal structure of these cells we can just see their vague shapes okay and so I would love to, love to find another way to confirm the size independent of the laser properties oh, look at that but until I get there this is all we have to work with okay it took me a while to grow this bacteria culture I just used sugar and certain other food items with enough protein for the microbes to grow in and dirty water from the outside. There we go. There is something up there. Come on.
Okay, need more movement. Okay, so this is a very simple experiment that I think all schools should be doing. Because right about high school time, they learn about light being of wave nature. And they might actu actually learn about microorganisms as well. You see these out of focus ones, right? Depending on the curvature of the droplet, a different distance from its surface is in focus. Right? So the out of focus ones are either in front, front or behind. And uh, if we hit, get the laser pointer to point partially at the surface of the paper clip itself, right? We'll s the diffraction pattern becomes more clear-cut and evident. Well, that's everything.